and who has ceased to be a Kenyan citizen because that person has acquired citizenship of another country is entitled on application to regain Kenyan citizenship. Article 16 of the Constitution of Kenya further provides that a citizen by birth does not lose citizenship by acquiring the citizenship of another country. By the mere fact of acquiring uh, citizenship of another country, nobody gets to lose their original citizenship by birth. There are few rights that um, are, are as protected as the right to citizenship in our, under our constitution. The right to nationality is sacrosanct. A reference case on this, uh, on, this, on this point is the High Court matter of 2016 by Honorable J J Justice Mativo in Elana Wamuyu, Askew, and two others versus the Director of Immigration and Registration of Persons and another. That was petition number 352 of 2016, which held that a Kenyan citizen at birth <coughs> cannot lose his or her citizenship and is entitled to all the rights that accrue to a citizen, including the right to be issued with a passport. It must also be noted that Section 6 of the Kenya, Kenyan Citizenship and Immigration Act provides that citizenship by birth shall carry the same meaning as in Article 14 of the Constitution of Kenya. The provisions of Section 8, 1 and 2 of the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Act also provide that a citizen of Kenyan a citizen of Kenya by birth who acquires the citizenship of another country shall be entitled to retain the citizenship of Kenya subject to the provisions of this act and the limitations relating to dual citizenship prescribed under the Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen and fellow Kenyans, this is the law regarding citizenship. In terms of revocation of citizenship, Section 21 of the same act, the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Act, provides for revocation of citizenship by registration only in line with Article 17 of the Constitution. A citizen by birth, citizenship by birth is not revocable. The same must be preceded by advice to the relevant cabinet secretary by the Citizenship Advisory Committee to ensure the right of fair administrative action, any person whose citizenship is to be revoked shall be informed of the reasons thereof and be accorded the opportunity to respond, including the right to defend their position in a court of law. In the circumstances, the state must conform to Article 16 of the Constitution of Kenya that expressly states that citizenship by birth cannot be revoked. Mr. Miguna Miguna is therefore entitled to a Kenyan passport and all other rights. Indeed, this is the matter before the High Court that must be concluded conclusively or determined conclusively. My, my colleague from the Law Society of Kenya will read the part of our statement regarding disobedience of court orders. Ladies and gentlemen, at the time... Just a minute, just a minute. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, at the time of making this statement, we are reliably informed that Mr. Miguna was redeported last night aboard flight EK-722. Sources confirm that he was quietly seated on seat number 45J when the flight took off from Nairobi. KNCHR team was on the ground all along until this time. It is left for people's imagination 
on how the authorities got Mr. Miguna to be quiet and compliant. The botched re-deportation attempt on Monday, 26th March, was a most unfortunate event, even that event, event. event that has exposed Kenya to global ridicule. The legal fraternity and the whole country has become increasingly concerned with state's blatant disregard of lawful court orders as witnessed over the last couple of months. Our constitution outlines that the authority of the people shall be exercised through the three arms of government, the executive, legislature, and the judiciary, which ought to be independent so as to offer checks and balances. The national values and principles of governance requires that the rule of law by the center of the nation be the center of the nation. Indeed, laws emanating from parliament and the judiciary through orders of court must be obeyed. Organs that have been created by the same constitution must adhere to the spirit of, const of the constitution and not undermine each other. It is clear that in this case, our judicial arm of government is besieged by the executive through commissions established by the constitution and appurtenant legislations. And, uh, and appurtenant legislation. The present circumstances are telling a manifestation of such disregard of the law and orders of court. We, the legal profession, are concerned with the handling of a Kenyan citizen and an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Mr. Miguna Miguna, Mr. Miguna Miguna, in blatant disregard, disregard of court order by Justice Kimaru, Mr. Miguna was irregularly deported. The court ordered his return, but he was held in communicado with no clear reasons and explanation. The order of court preferred preferred on the 26th of February 2018 gave several options to the parties to effect Mr. Miguna's safe re-entry into the country. One of them being the option to use his Canadian passport to secure re-entry into the country. <coughs> However, we understand that Mr. Miguna had concerns about handing over his passport being his only travel document. At this point, the state ought to have exploited the alternative means for securing his entry into the country, avert the unfolding saga that is being witnessed at our doorsteps. It is very clear that the government had not taken any measures to secure Mr. Meguna's entry into the country, as had been directed by the court on the 26th February 2018. This notwithstanding, the state has continued to disregard subsequent court orders relating to release handling and entry of Mr. Miguna. The order by Lady Justice Aburili, issued on the 27th March 2018, was ignored and disregarded. Further, on the 28th of March 2018, the High Court issued three more orders, one of them requiring that CS Interior Fred Matiangi, the IG uh, Joseph Boynet, and Director of Immigration Gordon Kilahalangwa to, Kihalangwa to appear in court. This too was disregarded. Court orders to produce Miguna in court were also ignored. It is important to remember that there can be no justification for disobedience of court orders mm -hmm. by any party. There is no reason lawyers should be attacked while lawfully exec uh, executing their mandate. No entity, be it the state or private sector, has the liberty to determine which orders is convenient to obey. And if the state is disgruntled about an order, there are options of seeking to set aside the order or appeal. We can upon we call upon the government to lead by example and to respect the institutions created by the constitution. We are calling upon the state to heed to the call and keep the promise of adhering to the rule of law and constructive constitutionalism. We urge the president, His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, to make good the golden handshake and give it meaning. We were actually at the brink of regaining political tranquility and we hope the gains shall not be lost in this unfortunate process of disobedience of court orders. We further urge the state to move with haste and handle Miguna's situation with the highest degree of professionalism and it, des it deserves and avoid the embarrassment being witnessed at our doorsteps. We are imploring the state to permit lawyers to execute their lawful mandate without resistance and unnecessary hurdle. I will therefore handle the next portion of this uh, conference to the media.
the representative from the media council. Thank you very much. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, the Law Society of Kenya, the Media Council of Kenya, which also allowed the media for their professional conduct and continued updates on the return of Miguna Miguna since Monday 26th, March 2018, as ordered by the High Court. The National Commission on Human Rights, Law Society of Kenya, and Media Council of Kenya consider the latest actions by the police as harassment of journalists in the course of their duty, we wish to remind the state, and in particular the police, that the said journalists are fully accredited by the Media Council of Kenya and are guided by the Code of Ethics for the practice of journalism in Kenya as enforced by the Media Council of Kenya. We also wish to acknowledge the difficult environment in which media practitioners operate in this country currently and as was clearly evident when they were on duty to ensure that they reported firsthand and even gave Light up, uh, live updates as the events unfolded at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport since, 20, uh, 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 since Monday, 20, 26th of March. Mm. However, the, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, Law Society of Kenya and Media Council condemn in the strongest terms possible and take issue with the threat to the safety of media practitioners making particular reference to the attacks against Citizen TV's Stephen Leto, NTV's Robert Gishira, and KTN Sophie Wanuna, among other journalists. Ms. Leto and Gishira sustained injuries, and their broadcast equipment was damaged in the process. The actions by the police are in total disregard and contravention of Article 33, Subsection 2 of the, Kenya, of the Constitution, which guarantees media freedom in line of duty and states the state shall not uh, exercise control over or interfere with any person engaged in broadcasting, the production or circulation of any publication or dissemination of information by any medium or B, penalize any person for any opinion or view or the content of a broadcast publication or, dis uh, or dissemination. The journalists were at the airport legally guaranteeing the public right to know and post no security threat. Oh, sorry. Sorry. The journalists post no security threat to the operations at the airport at that uh, time, a particular point in time. The actions by the police call into question their commitment to the rule of law and the re their respect for, for these fundamental rights and freedoms as enshrined in the Constitution of Kenya. Chair, you. To you. Thank you very much. We are confident that the Independent Police Oversight Authority, IPOA, will thoroughly and conclusively investigate the assault of journalists and those found to have broken the law bear individual responsibility. We would also like uh, to interest the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Commissioner for the administra Administration of uh, Commission for the Administration of Justice into the matter and urge them to investigate uh, this matter with a view of holding the perpetrators to account. As a national commission, together with our counterparts, the Law Society of Kenya and uh, the Media Council, we continue to engage this issue until justice is done or seen to be done. Um, lastly, I would just like to assure uh, Kenyans that um, um, our commission has been uh, very much engaged after the botched um, uh, uh, re-deportation attempt on, on the night of Monday 26th. Um, no one was allowed uh, access to Mr. Miguna Miguna uh, except um, our commission. And I'd like to introduce you to our, uh, our principal human rights officer, Mr. Kamanda Mucheke, who uh, is the one um, I designated to be 
to be the uh, to follow up on the matter and to write a report which will be filed in court he has since uh, written that report uh, from his monitoring on the 26th 27th and uh, yesterday the 28th um, he was the last person with Miguna Miguna up until about 8 30 in the evening when he left to go and buy him dinner uh, unfortunately, he, he, he could not uh, um, deliver the food to him because we got uh, a call. Um, he got a call from Miguna uh, in, uh, and he was uh, in distress saying that he was uh, being attacked and he was fearing for his life. Um, the rest of us went to backstop him at the airport, but we were not able to take the food to him. We later learned that he had been redeported aboard uh, the flight 722. Um, uh, Mr. Commander is here in, in terms of uh, questions that uh, uh, members of the press may want to ask and follow up. I'd also like to introduce my vice chair, um, uh, George Morara, who has joined us. And uh, now, uh, we'll, we'll please feel free to ask any questions. Okay, let me let um, my officer to give you a small brief of the of the our monitoring report since Mr. Miguna arrived until he was redeported. So, um, my name is Commander Mocheke, as I've been introduced. Thank you, Chair. This is an interim statement. As you may all know, some of us have not slept since Monday uh, when we started this exercise directed to us by the court. So, this is an interim. We'll have a detailed report later. Uh, and this, as, I, as the Chair said, is following a court directive for the Commission to observe the return of Meguna Meguna to the country and to ensure that his rights were guaranteed. So, after that directive, and as we learned that Meguna was going to return on Monday the 26th, we wrote to the, the relevant authorities that the director of all the respondents, the director of immigration, the PS immigration, the IGP, the DCI, KEA, Kenya Airports Authority, uh, uh, to tell us what measures they had put in place to, to ensure Meguna safe return to the country. Specifically, we sought to know whether they had given him a valid Kenyan's passport uh, and whether they were going to facilitate his coming in. So once we wrote, we held follow-up meetings, uh, one with the director of immigration. Uh, that was on Friday uh, at around 3, 4 p.m. Uh, he was non committal on the issue of the passport and he referred us to his boss, that is Gordon Kiharangwa. He said... They don't control access to the airport, so that would have to be dealt with by the Kenya Airports Authority. Uh, in the meantime, we had written to the Kenya Airports Authority, and on Monday, we went to their offices, the headquarters, the office of the managing director, and we sought access. Uh, the access we had sought is all the clearance areas, from the flight arrival area to the passport control to the customs, all the way to the terminal. Uh, so... They referred us to the manager of the security at JKIA, who initially issued us three, three passes, mm -hmm. uh, myself, the chair, and one more officer. But uh, apparently, under, on instructions from above, he, he came back and told us, no, we can only allow the chair, because that was their interpretation of the court order. Uh, we insisted that when the court mentioned the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, it is the office of the chair, not the chair, the person. But they, they, on those orders, they insisted that only the chair had to go. Uh, but because the chair needed to go with a technical person to, or for purposes of doing the report, she delegated uh, the task to me. So at around the flight, Meguna was scheduled to land in Nairobi at 2.30. Uh, so we kept on pushing them because he wanted to be at the runway when the plane was landing to ensure that he's not abducted again like they have done in the past. But they delayed. And then when they took me in, I was accompanied by two immigration officers. That is one called Morimeri Mathai and James Nikuli. They took me through some Panya routes. And by the time I arrived at, um, I insisted I go outside the airport 
the bus had landed. You know the airport buses that bring people from the runway. So I looked around and then I saw Meguna alighting from the plane. So the bus, the stop is just next to the border control, to the visa control area. So I went introduced myself to Meguna. I had met him in Kajiado when he was abducted, before he was abducted. So we proceeded to the to the passport control desk. Um, so Meguna was stopped and he was asked to give his travel document. He removed his national identity card, which he gave, he presented. Uh, I must say there were so many security officers around, both in uniform and in civilian, around that uh, passport control area. So they told him the Kenyan passport, the Kenyan ID is not a valid travel document. He said he doesn't have a passport for the re simple reason that the police took the passport from him and they have declined to reissue it as per the code directive. And then he said, I'm a Kenyan, uh, I'm here, this is a Kenyan ID, I don't have any other document. So there was a standoff. Uh, they exchanged words with the immigration officials there. At some point, Meguna got agitated, so he pushed his way through the passport control area. And the police followed him in hot pursuit to the baggage area. So at the baggage area, <coughs> he waited for his luggage as more police now came in. So all of a sudden, we had like 50 police officers, senior, some very senior officers. Uh, the luggage, it's, it took a while for the luggage to come. So the luggage finally came and Meguna took his, his, his bag, his suitcase, and started walking towards the exit. Uh, he was followed and stopped. Uh, there was another scaffold there. Um, so they stopped him. They created a cordon ahead of him and they said he will not leave. So after, after a while, Meguna went and sat at the baggage uh, trail. Uh, then the officials came and tried to convince me to tell Meguna to give the Canadian passport. I told them I'm observing uh, uh, what you are doing, so I have not, nothing much to do. And Meguna had already made his, his, his case very clear. Uh, after a while, the lawyers came in. Initially, the lawyers wanted to come in, wanted access also to the clearance areas, but they were denied by the immigration. So they remained outside together with the chair and other commission officials as I entered. But at some point, I told the immigration to allow his lawyers to come in so that whatever they're asking Meguna, he can benefit from legal advice from his lawyers. Uh, so the lawyers came in, they were John Kaminoa, Nelson Harvey, Cliff Ombeta, Julie Soweto, and James Orengo. So Meguna remained adamant. I'm not going to give uh, my Canadian passport, uh, any passport, because I don't have a passport. Uh, there was a stalemate until around 10 p.m. Uh, I was noting the time uh, uh, whenever a major incident happened. So around 10, 10.04, about 15 officers came in. Some were dressed in those, those uh, coats of Emirates, what do you call it, the reflector jackets. And they attempted to take Meguna, and Meguna resisted. So another scuffle ensued. Uh, two minutes later, Raila Odinga came in with security detail. Uh, Raila held Meguna's hand, uh, talked to the immigration people, and Raila said, no, Meguna, uh, let's go. He told Meguna, let's go. So they headed towards the exit. In the meantime, more officers had come in. We are talking about now about 100 officers. Uh, so as Raila was walking, he was, again, the po police officers rushed and blocked Raila and his security detail and Meguna and the lawyers um, and a senior officer ordered all the gates to be closed. Uh, by this time we had gotten near the exit and the, 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 the gates have a glass window so you can see outside. So the crowd that was outside and the journalists now could see what was happening because we had exited the baggage area. Um, so some of the supporters of uh, Meguna and perhaps Raila attempted to, they had not managed to close the door completely. So the door was pushed. 
So there was a, an opening where Meguna managed to address the media, and I believe that's what you saw happening live on that day. Um, uh, then, uh, at some point, because of the commotion outside, so we are sat inside, because there's a stalemate, with Raila, Meguna, we, so you're all close and caged inside. Uh, the lawyers, ourselves, uh, uh, we could now see the police coming in with their, uh, the Land Rovers, with the police lights and the sirens and trucks. So they came, uh, and at some point, they began dispersing people outside. That's at the point they started assaulting the journalists who were outside, as we were inside. So they cleared the journalists and the crowds who were there. We could see them beating some of the journalists. After they cleared them, the GSU through another exit came in. Uh, many of them, about 50 or so. In the meantime, they were commanded by an officer called Philip Ndolo. On inquiry, I was told he is the head of Kapu at JKIA. There was another officer who refused to give me her name. Uh, she went and mobilized a squad because initially they had attempted to push Meguna, but Meguna being the behemoth he is, they were unable to, 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 to take him away. So they brought well-built officers uh, in civilian. So they are the ones who came and suddenly picked Meguna, another one took his trolley, and the GSU were covering them. Uh, those who also could see Raila also following behind. But the GSU, they managed to push Meguna past the gate towards the runway. We tried to follow up. I tried to say I'm monitoring because I had the pass, but uh, I was assaulted by one of the officers. Actually, they told my trousers that the fly was, is, is torn um, because I was recording. So they attempted to take my phone, but I resisted. So after they went with the Meguna, they came back. That Ndolo came back and ordered everyone to vacate the, the airport, those ones who are inside. So the gate was opened and we all came out. So those who are there will remember when we came out, I don't know who was addressing the media. The police came again in hot pursuit and told everyone to leave. So they didn't spare anyone. Uh, uh, at least as we had our GKs with the vice chair, we were there. So we remained behind. Uh, so it was cleared. Um, and then we, we went and did a, a, post -mortem, a brief of what had happened. And we left JKIA at around half past midnight. Uh, day two, I went at 10.30, uh, because I, I just said I slept at around 4. So I was there at 10.30. I went. So we had asked for the clearance that they give has an expiry time. So the one they had issued me on day one, they had put it, it was expiring at 4 o'clock. Okay, they wanted to throw me out, but I told them, well, Perhaps in, initially we thought the issue would have, Meguna would have been cleared by four, but now it has expired. It's an ongoing situation. So I refused to come out, and the lawyers were there in Akaminoa. I didn't get out. So it had expired. So I needed to renew it this day for me to be able to, be able to access Meguna. I faced a lot of challenges. Uh, they told me you need fresh uh, authority from the director of immigration, from the manager, but I said no, it's an ongoing situation. Um, I called the chairperson who tried to intervene, but I, they, wouldn't, they, could, they, wouldn't, they could not give me. So I went and picketed on the, on the desk of, of the manager, and I refused to allow anyone in. Uh, there was a commotion, so he asked someone to bring the pass. So I got the pass at around 12.30. Um, then they needed to have me escorted, because they were telling me, even if you have the pass, you have to be escorted by an immigration official. I waited again. They refused to come, so I decided to, to move, to go to uh, Terminal 2. But I didn't know where Meguna was being held. Uh, so I moved. The, the, there's a distance between the office of the airport manager to where Meguna was being held. You have to drive from Terminal 1 to Terminal uh, 2, the other side. So I went there. Again, they stopped me. But finally, they allowed me... Uh, an officer came and I was taken to Meguna. Um, so when I arrived there, I found uh, Meguna. I found Meguna in a toilet. Um, it's a toilet area, 
So we have the main washrooms, about four. We have ladies, we have gents, and there is one toilet for persons with disabilities. That's why if, those, if you have seen those pictures, that toilet, there is that ramp for persons with disabilities. So yes, it's a toilet. It was not a cell. So he was there. Uh, there was a mattress. And um, there were around 15 police officers. GSU and regular police officers. All armed, including those extra bullets they carry with that jacket. Uh, um, so I asked Meguna to give me an account of what happened after we were dispersed and after they took him to the runway. So he told me when they took him, he resisted, and he told the captain he wouldn't fly whatsoever. Uh, so they decided to take him out. They took him to the runway, put him in a pickup, and led by a vehicle in, in a siren and others following behind, full of police officers. Taken round, he would be taken to a place where there is a plane. You would hear the sound of the plane moving. Then, after a while, he was taken, that's when he was taken to that cell. Um, um, so when he went to the cell, um, they first searched him forcefully. They were looking for the Canadian passport. But before that, he tells me they, he, they, they took his money. He had some money in foreign currency. So he tells me when he checked, he found they had taken $1,500. They also ripped his coat, his coat apart. Uh, we have the pictures, okay. we have videos. Um, yeah. So somebody, someone also brought a mattress to him uh, after the police had left. I guess it was an immigrant edition officer. Meguna told, tells me he, the person was a nice person. Um, they had not given him food by the time I arrived. The toilet has no shower, it's a toilet. Uh, the sink has very hot water, so he could not shower uh, in there. The room is very tiny, it's a toilet, so it has no window, no ventilation. It was very hot and stuffy. Actually, when we stayed there, it would come out in intervals outside there, because you stay there, you start sweating. So he could not sleep because of the condition of the cell. Uh, he was yet to be granted access to his lawyers. His lawyers, as has been mentioned, were brutalized outside there. The families did not even know where they were. I'm the one who facilitated, because I had a phone. He would call the family, he would call the lawyers. Um, but he told me he had uh, been visited by a Canadian consular official in the morning. He also told me in the morning, the immigration officials brought him some forms to fill to regain his citizenship. But he told them, I'd never lost my citizenship. I won't sign those documents. So they went back. Um, in the meantime, <coughs> the lawyers had gone to court. So I was called by Orengo, uh, who told me they were on their way. So they came and told me they were facing difficulties to serve the court orders. Uh, they also needed to, have, to give Meguna a copy of the court order. So I went outside, got to three court, two court orders, gave Meguna one, and I tried to serve uh, the officers who are in charge of that area. I had come to know the officer who was commanding the division. That was one, Bernard Amugune, uh, and the, the, office, the immigration officer in charge of that area refused to disclose uh, his name. But I told them, here is a court order, it's valid, please receive it. They all refused and told me to sign it, to, to, to give it to their bosses. Uh, in the meantime, the lawyers went to pin. To, uh, Orengo told me that they had decided to pin the court orders uh, to the, the various offices there. Uh, remember, my pass was expiring at mid midnight, so I left. And yesterday, I went back at 9.30. Same problems, same, uh, same stonewalling. Uh, I did not get a pass until 3 p.m. Uh, so I went. The first thing, Meguna had not eaten. So I went, I asked him, what do you want to eat? I went to buy him food at the cafe, and I went back. Uh, he also told me the Canadian consular officials had come, but they had been denied access to him. The lawyers were outside there. They were not allowed to see him. So... Um, we stayed together talking, 
uh, nothing much happened until around 8.30 because the cafes they are closed in that terminal. So I needed to buy him dinner uh, so that when I leave he has food for the morning. So I went, I had checked outside, nothing seemed to be happening. There were just very few officers, but I guess they were waiting for the opportune moment to strike. Um, so I left, I went outside. In the meantime, Orengo called me and Harvey and told me they have obtained further orders for the release of Miguna. They asked me where I was, so I told them I'm at the cafe waiting for Miguna's food. I'll be there shortly. But while I was waiting for the food, Harvey came with Julie Soweto in a panic. They had been beaten, uh, and actually they wanted to exit the airport because the GSU were pursuing them. So I also panicked because now it, I, it clicked what would be happening to Miguna. So I quickly dashed to the car with the food. I actually left some of the food uh, for the morning. And I went straight to, to the car. Uh, but before I entered the car, Miguna called in distress and told me they are killing me. Uh, please come quickly and inform everyone. Uh, and then the phone was ab abruptly switched off. I tried to call him again. The, the phone was off. So we drove, we sped off, went back to the to Terminal 2, and I found not, not less than 100 GSU officers armed to the teeth. Uh, I tried to come out. They pointed, they said no one is allowed access. Remember, they had cleared everyone else apart from security officers, and it was just myself and our driver. So I decided to go back to the car, I told the driver to put on the car. We rolled all the windows up and locked the car, but they kept on milling around our car. I called the chairperson who advised me not to leave the car to stay safe until she arrives uh, with other officers. So we waited in the car and the chair arrived at around, um, what time was it? At around 11, uh, 30. 11.13. Yeah, 11.13. And we went to, we, now we walked towards, she parked next to where we had parked, and we went to, towards the building. So along the way, we found two Canadian officials. Uh, I think the head of the consular services and the, the, uh, a lady official who had been designated to deal with the Meguna issue. So we greeted each other. They told us they are waiting. They had been summoned, but they had been told to wait for an immigration official. Uh, so we proceeded towards the gate and sought to, I said, I was carrying the food and the juice and the tea. <coughs> so I told the officers, because I had told them I am going to bring food. So I have come back as I have always done since Monday. So they said, no, uh, you cannot access. Uh, so we asked them why. They said their instructions. We asked them, chair asked them, who is your boss? So there was a lady called Doreen Ntoiti who was the commanding officer. She told us to wait for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs officials. We said, no, we are not consular officials. We are the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Uh, she said, still, I'll need to uh, call someone. So she called someone who she told us was the OCS, uh, Mr. Abdi, who I think I'm familiar with, because all through he had been coming uh, inside there. So chair told, she told us he has said no entry. So chair sought to speak to the superior, uh, but sh they refused. They did not pick. They did not pick. They could not give the number. So that was it. Uh, we left the airport at 12.25 after midnight. So that's the brief. We'll, we will compile a, a more detailed report after we have slept and we are back to our senses. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that is uh, just a brief um, by Commander Mucheke, our principal human rights officer. And um, if, in case you have any other uh, uh, follow-up questions, it's, uh, you can ask. Otherwise, we can call it a day. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? Uh, name, please. Yeah, yeah. Questions, Madam <laughs> Mucheke. Mm -hmm. My name is Kenna uh, for the, from uh, the People Daily. I just wanted to know, According to the Kenya National Human Rights, do you think the Guna uh, mm -hmm. uh, followed the right procedure? Was it, was it the, the idea of arriving, the, uh, arriving uh, producing the Canadian passport which had uh, mm -hmm. traveled with 
was it did he follow the right procedure the, the other question um, the issue of uh, respect of law from the executive and uh, i don't know are you surprised that they they, they need it? that they did not go to this the actions are you surprised with the actions and that from uh, this the, the man on the ground if, if you kindly guide us there, there have been conflicting reports on the amount uh, some are saying one, 150 uh, others are saying uh, 1500 and uh, was it uh, US dollars or uh, uh, Canadian dollars? Uh, thank you very much. Um, we are going by the testimony, uh, first our testimony of um, Mr. Miguna on your last question uh, to our Principal Human Rights Officer, Mr. Commander Mucheke and the amount he has stated uh, as told by Miguna was uh, 1500 US dollars US dollars that's the money he claims was uh, uh, w w he lost when 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 a search was when uh, the policeman searched him uh, regarding the first uh, question i was um, at the airport at the time although as you hear i was not allowed access so i allowed my technical officer um, to go and meet uh, Miguna on behalf of the commission, and um, I was uh, I was disappointed with Mr. Miguna because um, the court order had uh, uh, allowed him to use his Canadian passport to gain entry into the into the country, and uh, he adamantly refused to use the papers he had travelled with. Uh, the documents he had travelled with were his Canadian papers. I had fully expected him at least to use them to gain entry into the country, and uh, his refusal just really uh, boggled us also. And uh, he was a bit too boisterous in the in the at the immigration desk. And as you have been, as you have heard, he did uh, push around some immigration officers and forced his way to the um, to the luggage, uh, the uh, baggage collection area. I think that was in breach of um, the immigration regulations. But um, still, we did try to salvage the situation and hoped that. Um, uh, if he could produce his Canadian papers, we wangled at least uh, a cooperation from some of the immigration officials we spoke to with a view of uh, ensuring that he is granted entry on a gratis basis just so that he can be able to be in country and remain in country until the hearing of the petition is concluded. So essentially there were some missteps, I say, I think, on both sides. But one of the things which um, I, I think we cannot override is the fact that in a blatant breach of uh, court orders, um, the principals, principal officers of, uh, of, of the state uh, orchestrated his first deportation out, uh, out of the country. And also in blatant uh, breach of the orders of court, they failed to reissue the uh, Kenyan passport that uh, they had perforated or cancelled uh, uh, to facilitate his re-entry into the country as a Kenyan citizen. Mr. Miguna Miguna was adamant and very clear and loudly so in his refusal um, to enter Kenya on, on, as a foreigner or on for, with foreign documents because he, he, he claimed uh, very uh, uh, adamantly and very robustly that since he was a Kenyan citizen, he was not going to re-enter the country as a foreigner. So essentially, that, uh, that, that's where the stalemate started. But um, at the commission, as you hear, since uh, Monday, we have not really had a lot of rest here. And uh, we will try and um, do a, a much deeper analysis of any missteps or, or opportunities that were missed by either side uh, to avoid the debacle and the, uh, the event of uh, forcibly uh, 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 pushing Miguna into the flight on Monday that um, I think exposed all Kenyans everywhere to, to global ridicule and even condemnation. Um, are we surprised that uh, court orders were blatantly breached? I must say that the audacity of, uh, of, the, of this blatant breach does surprise us. 
nobody, nobody in this country, no officer, state officer or public officer, private citizen, or uh, anybody sitting in whatever office in this country is above the law. Full stop. Period. Nobody is above the law. And the fact that a senior officers in government can, can, can uh, breach uh, orders of the court not one time, not two times, not three times, but five times is very surprising to us. And I just think that that uh, brought us to a new level of abuse of the rule of law. <coughs> and we have often said that anarchy is not democracy. And this act, I think, has dealt a very big blow to our democracy. Another question? Thank you.